Into New York Harbor comes an American hospital ship, bringing from overseas the most precious of all cargoes, sick and wounded servicemen coming home to be healed. The same lady they waved goodbye to so many months ago welcomes them back home again. The miracles of modern medicine, coupled with the tonic effect of familiar scenes, will work wonders for these men. Soon they will be back on native soil. Already they're looking forward with longing to contact with mother, wife, or sweetheart. A longing sharpened through long months of separation. A longing now so close to fulfillment. As they start for the hospital, their thoughts are of home and loved ones. And it's home they think of as they check in. Those who are able take the first opportunity to go to the nearest approach to home they can find, the telephone center. Already the telephone center is alive with activity. Here are facilities to take care of the telephone calls that bring the joyous experience of voice-to-voice -voice contact with loved ones. A deluge of names, towns, and telephone numbers is received with smiling efficiency. Calls go out to big cities, small towns, hamlets, farms, and faraway ranch houses. Some men, in an atmosphere of friendly comfort, wait for their calls to go through. Others need assistance in finding the people they want to call. Some thumb through the directory, searching for long-forgotten numbers. It's a tense moment as these men place their first calls home. My name is Joe Camel. And the number I want is Main 346. Gosh, I haven't said that in a long time. Is there anyone in particular you want to talk to? Oh, I'll talk to anybody, only well, hurry, will you, miss? I'm sure it won't take long. There are just a few ahead of you. Thank you. That first call is mighty important to Joe, and each minute of waiting will seem like an hour. But the wait is made as pleasant as possible. The telephone manager has seen to that. He's one of the busiest men at the hospital. But among his various duties, none is more important than acting host to the waiting men. In this home away from home, the latest newspapers and magazines are on hand. And here telephone calls are anticipated as hometowns in far off states are located. Some of the men, and Joe is one of these, just sit and grow more nervous as the minutes go by. And suddenly... Private Joe Campbell. On your call, we're ready. Booth four, please. At last, Joe is going home. Hello? Uh, hello? Uh, is that you, sis? Uh, this is Joe. Oh, Joe! Mom! Mom! Just a minute, Joe. She'll be here in a sec. Joe! Mom? It's me, Joe. Joe! Oh, my boy, my boy. Oh, no, Mom, don't do that. Joe! Joe, are you all right? Sure, I'm all right, Mom. I'm in Halloran. It's an army hospital. Hospital? Oh, Joey! Oh, no, Mom. It's nothing. I'm okay. Joey, when'd you come home? Oh, Joey, it's so wonderful to hear you again. Gee, it's swell to talk to you. Yes, Joe is getting a large dose of one of the best medicines in the world, the voices of loved ones. Special attention has been given in Army and Navy hospitals all over the country to making the wounded men comfortable as they make their calls. Here is an extra large booth for those who have cumbersome splints. Injuries to the ear are accommodated too. To this telephone, an amplifier unit has been attached. And when a lad can't use his hands, an attendant attaches a head and chest set. In the process of recovery, these special facilities play their part for they encourage the men to come to the telephone center to make their calls, giving them one more incentive to get well. Everything has been provided that will make telephoning easy and pleasant, for marvelous indeed is the curative power of a chat with the folks at home. 
Hey, Joe. Boy, I'm living again. But what about the boys that can't get to the telephone? Then the telephone comes to them. Hey, Miss Telephone. Miss Bell. Say, honey, don't forget about that Nashville call. I won't. Should come through pretty soon now. You know something, Miss Telephone? I've got ghost pimples waiting for this call. Well, you won't have to wait long. Are you sure they got her? Of course. Matt, the service station sent someone down to your home. Did he talk to my wife? Sure. She said she'd come over to the service station as soon as she got the baby out of the bath. It won't be long. Come here, tell me something. What am I going to say to her? Well, Sergeant, I... I think I'd tell her where I was and how I was. Yeah, that's right. I gotta tell her I'm gonna be okay. Sure you are. Say, do you think she might bring the baby? She might. <laughs> Gosh, if she does, what am I gonna say to it? It? <laughs> it's a girl. Oh. Gosh, I've never even seen the kid. Well, how old is the baby? It's about, about 10 months. <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about what you're going to say to her. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Just a moment. Here's your call, Sergeant. Hello? Nikki? Yes, this is Tom. The happy experience of Sergeant Stevens is like that of many others who are unable to go to the telephone center. The telephone attendants who handle these calls are A number one morale builders. In addition to making telephoning convenient and pleasant, they help the patients in many little ways. It's a great satisfaction to these telephone girls to feel they are playing such a great part in bringing happiness to these men. Special facilities make telephoning convenient for wheelchair patients, who by the use of large booths are enabled to go directly to the telephone. Many men, like Sergeant Stevens, find that the first call home is something they will long treasure in their memories. In addition, such an experience serves to relieve the anxiety about those at home and gives the patient a big spurt toward recovery. Yeah, yes, all right. Come on, baby. Could you speak to Daddy? Come on. Speak to Daddy. Oh, boy, that was great. <laughs> All right. I'll call you again soon. Goodbye, sugar. You know, the baby just called me daddy. Yeah? Sure did. <laughs> General Ralph G. DeVoe, commanding officer of Halloran Hospital on Staten Island, speaks for the medical military when he says, Telephone calls to home are a great help to us in the military service. We're charged with the duty of bringing our sick and wounded men from overseas back to a normal condition again. These telephone calls put the patient in the right frame of mind, ready to do his part, and modern medical science does the rest. Worry about the folks at home will stall our progress and make the cure more difficult. The telephone calls help to prevent this worry. Yet the wrong kind of telephone call is worse than none at all. It is up to you on the home end of these calls to see to it that nothing is said to upset or worry the wounded man. Treat him as the normal person he has been and we hope will be again. Be casual, be realistic, not over cheerful. The telephone call itself is going to help your boy. If your manner is natural, he may want to talk about himself, or he may not. Respect his wishes. Don't mention his injury, unless he does. If his wounds are serious, let him tell you in his own time and in his own way. What has been going on at Halloran General Hospital has been going on in other hospitals, Army and Navy throughout the country. We have worked hard to get the right mixture of optimism and realism in our attitude so that these boys may help themselves while we are helping them. In these hospitals, 
There are telephone arrangements similar to those you have seen at Halloran. They are designed to make the calls pleasant and satisfactory. But there are two ends to every telephone call. We can control our end, but we must rely on you, wives, parents, and sweethearts, to control yours. If the call is to be pleasant, helpful, and satisfying. Gee, it's swell to talk to you. 